Hello everybody, welcome again to another interesting video on quantitative aptitude from careerdrive.com. The topic that we are going to discuss in today's video is data interpretation. And to be more specific, we are going to talk about pie charts today. Now, as all of you know, this is again a very, very important topic when it comes to your placement tests and entrance exams. Because based on just one data, there can be three or four questions that you can see in the exams. Many of you find these questions lengthy, some of you find them difficult also. But in today's video, we are going to some, see some very easy ways to solve these questions very quickly. So, let's begin. Okay, so before we begin to solve the questions from pie chart, we'll set some basics right first because these are the basics that not just help you understand the questions properly, but also take a right approach to solve them. Okay, so now those of you who have already seen a pie chart in the past, you would know that a pie chart, in pie chart, the data is given to you in the form of a circle. Let us see this colorful circle here first. Okay, so I assume that this is my pie chart and the data is given to me in the form of various sections here. And each of the sectors here, each of the sections here is called a sector and they represent some data. This data could be in the form of fractions, it could be in the form of percentage or it could also be in the form of angles. Okay, now let us first of all try to understand for the fractions and I'll try to explain it to you with the help of a very practical real life example. So let us assume that this colorful pie chart that I've got here is a pizza that I've ordered. Okay, and there are six pieces of the pizza at the moment and each of them seem to be equal of in size to me. So each of these pieces is one by six of the whole pizza, right? But the interesting thing to notice is Whatever the size of these uh, pieces of the pizza may be, but whenever you add all of them, you will always get the complete whole pizza. The answer would always be 1, right? Similarly, if you have got your data in the form of percentages, let us come to the second, this yellow circle that I have got here, okay? So, if the data is given to you in the form of percentages, let us assume that this upper part is 50%, this is 25%, I'm just taking an example here. This is also given to you as 25%, but whenever you add the whole thing up, you will always get one pizza, which is what? Which is always 100% when you talk in terms of percentages, right? So whenever the data is given to you in the form of percentages, it will always, always add up to 100% percent okay now coming to angles i'll try to explain this to you with the help of this third green circle that i've got here and let us suppose that the angle of the first part given to you here is what it is 180 degree let us assume that the angle formed here at the center is what this part forms an angle of let us say 140 degree and this uh, third part it forms an angle of 40 degrees at the center. So, since this is a circle, all the angles, the summation of all the angles will always be what? It will always be 360 degrees. Right? Why 360 degrees? Because this is a circle and the central angle of a circle is what? It is always 360 degrees. Right? So, pretty basic thing to understand but a very, very important thing to understand. Okay, now the next thing that will come quite useful to you while solving the questions or while marking the answers also will be knowing the fractional values of some percentages. So, let us try to understand that in this slide. If something is given to you that it is 100%, it means you have got the whole thing and it means it is one whole thing. Its value is 1. Suppose they say that it is 75% uh, thing is given to you. It means 3 fourths of that thing is given to you. Its fractional value will be 3 by 4. 50% all of you know that means half of that thing that you have got. 25% means 1 quarter or 1 by 4. 12.5% means 1 by 8 of that thing. That means it is half of 25% and half of 25% is what? 12.5% which means it is 1 by 8 of the whole thing. 33% means 33 by 100 or 0.33. 66% works out to 66 by 100 or 0 
and similarly if i say that i have got 1% of something it means i have got just 1 out of 100 if i have got 1% marks it means i have got 1 out of 100 marks 10% means 1 upon 10 of that thing so these are some fractional values that i have marked here just so that you recollect them because you will require to solve the questions and they will make your calculations faster and they will also help you mark the right answers without any calculations in many cases okay so just pay attention to them now in the similar way it is also important to understand the degree values also okay now this is a pie chart that i have got here on the right hand side and since this is a circle all of us know that the central angle is going to be what it is going to be 360 degrees which means that if i have got 100% of something it means i've got this 360 degree if i have got 10% it means i've got 1/10th of this thing, this thing and what will be its value in degrees its value will be 360 upon 10 that is equal to 36 degrees if i've got 1% of this thing it means i've got what i've got 1 upon 100 it means i've got 360 by 100 that is equal to its value is equal to 3.6 degrees a uh, very important thing because you may not directly use it to solve the questions but it will also it will come very handy when you are trying to approach solving the questions okay so just keep this thing also in your mind okay so now let's begin to solve some questions and the first variety of questions that you will find in the exams on pie charts would be the variety where you will find the data in the form of percentages okay so if you look at the pie chart here you see that the data here is given to you in the form of percentages now if i give you a free hand and there is no time constraint i'm sure all of you will be able to solve this questions very very easily but your uh, constraint in uh, exams is your time so you have to take an approach that saves your time you have to save your time saving save save your time for that what is required it is required that you don't get into any lengthy calculations try to deal with the data in a, an as easy possible a manner as you can okay and for that what is required for that you require some smart ways of calculation you will not get into lengthy calculations you will use some smart ways to do those calculations right and that comes with practice and a bit of common sense i'm going to teach you all those ways along with the questions here make sure that you pay attention okay let's come to the question now the question says study the given pie chart and answer the questions and the question is the first one is what is family's yearly estimate for savings and charity put together okay so now let's come to the pie chart that is given to us here and it is said that the data that is given to me it is actually a total estimated yearly expense of a family okay and what they have the, uh, estimated to spend in the year they have estimated that they will spend 5 lakh 25000 rupees in the year and they will spend it under various heads which would be like rent wages bills groceries education they will spend on travels and then they will save some money they will spend on charity also so this is how their expenses going to be okay and it is asked to you in the question that what is family's yearly estimate for savings and charity it means that the 100% value the total estimate of expenses 100% value of the expenses is what 5 lakh 25000 right and it is asked to you what is the their estimate to spend on savings and charity together so if you look at the pie chart here you see that they expect to save 10% of the money and they expect to spend on uh, charity 8% of the entire money that they have budgeted here okay it means they the what is asked to you is it is the value of this 18% of the total estimated expense now you see how easy the question becomes once you know what is asked to you once you know how to read this data right so if i go by lengthy calculations what do i have to do i have to find the value of 18% of the total expense estimated that is 18% of 5 lakh 25000 this is basically what i have to find out if i go by traditional method what would i do i would do 18 upon 100 into 5 lakh 25000 and i'll keep solving right but i don't have just one question to solve i have to solve a lot of other things so i'm not going to uh, take this approach right 
how will i do to uh, make my things quicker i have seen that the value of 100% is 525000 and 10% is what we have seen initially that 10% is 1 upon 10 of the whole thing so 1 upon 10 of 525000 will work out to how much it will work out to 52500 right can i write 18% as 20% minus 2% yes i can do that i'm just trying to make my calculations easier okay so 20% if 10% is 52500 20% is going to be double of it how much would that be it will be 1 lakh 5000 i'm just doubling it i'm not doing anything else right 2% is what 2% is twice of 1% 1% is what 1 upon 100 1% we have seen already it is 1 upon 100 so twice of 1 upon 100 is what 5250 am i right yes this 5250 is nothing but the value of 1% i have just doubled it because i wanted 2% so how much does this work out to it works out to 1 lakh 5000 minus this is 10500 right can i solve this yes i can do that this comes out to 500 this side and 94 94500 rupees this is the value of my uh, the money that i expect to spend on my savings and charity put together and is this a option given in the uh, given here to me yes the option number b is this right answer here but now you see i just explained you the whole thing here that is why it took so much of time once you know how to approach this kind of a question you will quickly quickly come down to where you will quickly come down to 18% is equal to 20% minus 2% and you can easily solve this kind of a question in hardly how much you can you will hardly take 40 seconds to solve this kind of a question right but what is required it is required that you understand this approach and you actually practice to take this approach right these questions can be very very easy there is nothing difficult here all that is all that matters is your approach let's see the next question okay so now coming to the second part of the question and it says Online offers made them spend three percent less on the uh, than the estimates on groceries. They spend the saved amount equally on travel and charity. What will be the difference between the expenses on travel and charity? Now, see this question definitely looks lengthy, and that will scare a lot of you away from this question. And many of you might even just uh, not answer this question for the fear of getting some negative marks. But trust me this is a very very easy question and you don't even need any kind of calculations to solve this type of a question just if you know the logic behind it and if you just know how to apply your common sense here okay so see what is happening here it is given to you that earlier they were spending 15% on groceries and now they are saving 3% on the groceries and the estimates and which means there is a saving of 3% and they are now spending 12% on the groceries this 3% that they are spending less they spend equally on travel and then on charity right so earlier how much they were spending the case one earlier they were how much uh, spending how much on travel they were spending 10% and how much were they spending on charity they were spending 8% what was the difference the difference was 2% between the two of them right what is happening in the second case they saved 3% and they distributed the amount equally between travel and charity so if they were spending 10% earlier and they save x rupees it means they spend x by 2 more on travel and they spend x by 2 more on charity right what is the difference here now just take a look this question doesn't even need any type of a calculation right if i solve this the answer will again come out to be 2% why because this x by 2 will get cancel with this x by 2 my answer will still be 2% right and the option that is given to me is option number a same as before because my expenses the difference between the expenses on travel and charity are still the same so you basically see you don't require any kind of a calculation here all that you know is you have to know is that this amount is getting equally distributed between travel and charity so it is not making any impact at all right so how long do you think it will take to answer this type of a question for you 
it will not take more than 10 seconds right this type of a question is extremely extremely easy please do not skip these type of questions and just you have to apply your common sense right let's see the next one okay so now the third part of the question says expense on groceries is more than the expense on travel by what percentage okay now see a lot of you will skip this question also because you will feel that it is a very lengthy calculation the figure 525000 will look daunting to you and a lot of you may be scared of the negative marking also as i said earlier also okay but trust me this is again a very very easy question and you can do the calculations without using the figure 525000 at all how let me show you that okay so we learnt initially that whenever the data is given to you in the form of percentages we can always say that the total data is what the total of the data will be always 100% okay so rather than my expenses being 525000 what would happen if my expenses were just rupees 100 why i took rupees 100 because it is easier to the distribution will be same and it is easier to calculate with 100 rupees right so if my expenses were 100 rupees what would happen i'll still spend on groceries and my next expense will be on travel what is the expense on groceries in this case also it will be 15 percent and travel will be what 10 percent right if i convert it into rupees what would it be since it, the total is 100 rupees this will be 15 rupees and this will be what this will be 10 rupees now what is asked to you is how much is the expense on groceries more than the expense on travel in terms of percentages okay so now what is uh, the difference between the two 15 minus 10 is what this is the difference right the expense on groceries is 5 rupees more than the expense on travel and now if i try to convert it into the percentage because the answer is asked to be in the form of percentage right what would i do 5 divided by in terms of travel it is asked right how much percentage of travel right so what would come in the denominator it will the travel figure will come in the denominator because i'm trying to find in terms of the expenses on travel right so 5 upon 10 and since it is percentages i'll just multiply it by 100 what would this give me this will give me 50 percent so my expenses on groceries are 50 percent more than the expenses on travel and my option number c is the right answer here so you see how i avoided using this big figure of 525000 and i just did with 100 rupees here okay now if the question is asked to you a little differently if the question is uh, the expense on groceries what percent of travel then how would you do it the ex uh, expense on groceries what 50 15 rupees and it is what percent of travel so the travel is in denominator right it is 150 percent in that case but for my question the answer is 50 percent right this is what is the grocery as a percentage of grocery as percentage of travel is 150 percent right so just see what is asked in the question and then mark your answer right if you find the concepts of percentages that you are stuck somewhere we have got a complete video on percentages you can always go to go to that video in the playlist and take a good look learn that concept there and i'm sure these type of questions will be very very easy for you and it will not take more than 15 seconds for you to answer this kind of questions okay the only thing is you have to apply your smartness right let's move on to the next one okay now coming to the fourth part of this question other than getting a discount of 10 percent on rent and saving rupees 15,500 on travel the family estimated their expenses correctly what were their actual expenses for the year now what happens in this question is that the family estimated that they would spend 5,25,000 rupees for the year okay and their expenses were divided in the various heads but in reality they saved some money the first saving was on rent as given in the question and it, they had estimated that they would spend 20 percent on rent so 20 percent of 5 lakh 25 thousand they would spend on rent 
and we have seen that it works out to what one lakh five thousand. We have seen in a previous question, but they actually saved ten percent of the amount they had estimated for rent. So this ten percent, the first saving was what? Ten percent is one by ten. So one by ten of the estimated rent is what? Ten thousand five hundred, right? So this was the first saving. The second saving was on travel, and how much was the saving? It was fifteen thousand. 500 right so what was the total saving the total saving was 10500 plus 15500 works out to 26000 right so this was their saving actually now we have seen that they estimated their expenses would be 5 lakh 25000 but they ultimately landed up saving 26000 rupees so what were their actual expenses they were 4 lakh 99000 anything difficult here nothing difficult here the only thing is you have to read the question carefully and apply what you already know okay let's move on to the next one now okay so coming to the fifth part of the question now what is the sectorial angle made by the charity se sector okay now this is again a very important type of a question that is usually asked in the exams but there is nothing difficult about it it is pretty easy okay so we have seen initially that in a pie chart there are various sections and each of these sections is called what it is called a sector we have seen this already now each of these sectors they form an angle with the center at the center and if i talk about the grocery section sector it forms this angle at the center and what do we call this angle this angle is nothing but it is the sectorial angle okay how do we calculate this pretty easy okay so now we saw that initially uh, that whenever the data is given to you in the form of percentages 100% is the whole thing and if we are talking in terms of degrees 360 degrees is the whole thing because this is a circle so the complete angle would be what the complete angle formed would be 360 degrees and we saw that 1% is equal to what 1% is equal to 360 divided by 100 that is equal to 3. 6 degrees right we have already seen uh, all of this now i'm basically talking about the charity sector now this charity sector it forms a uh, 8% of the complete data okay it is 8% and now i know that 1% is equal to 3.6 degrees so 8% is equal to what 8 into 3.6 right if i go to multiply this i get 28.8 degrees which is my right option the third option given in the question is this 28.8 degrees but now how can i save my time on this i can save my time on this look at this 8 into 3.6 8 six of 48 which means my units digit has to be an 8 right right now it is 8 it could have been 28 it could have been 58 the calculations will become bigger right so you have to apply the smart ways 8 six of 48 which means my unit digit has to be an 8 okay let me go to the options again the first one is 36 cannot be the option because there is no 8 here 25 degrees no the the fourth option d option 35.6 degrees no 8 here no so the only option that has got an 8 in the unit digit is 28.8 degrees so this is my right option right so just try to make your calculations easier simplifications easier and the questions will become quicker for you okay let's move on to the next one now okay so now coming to the second variety of questions that you find from this chapter in your exams okay in this type of questions the pie chart is given to you with the distribution of data maybe in the form of percentages and then there is an accompany table also that contains some data and at the moment my data is in the form of ratios here okay and let us see how to solve this kind of questions the question says pehelgam gets tourists from country x and y percentage wise distribution of the influx of tourists is given for the first half of the year and then what is asked to you is what is the ratio of tourists from country y coming during april and may okay so now first of all it is given to you that the uh, tourists come to pehelgam from country x and y 
for the first six months the data is given to you okay in jan 17 percent of the tourists come february 22 percent 25 percent april 8 percent may 12 percent then jan june 16 percent of the people visit pehelgam okay and the total number of tourists that visit during this these six months is what it is 90,000 my table says that okay and now it is also given to me that 17 percent of people who come in january they are divided and when i talk in terms of the countries some come from country x some come from country y and what is the ratio the ratio is 8 is to 7 okay and similarly it happens for the further months february march april may and june also okay now what is asked to me in the question it is asked to me what is the ratio of tourists that come from country y specifically country y during the month of april and may okay so first of all let me find out during the month of april and during the month of may how many tourists visit this place called pehelgam okay so i see that uh, in the month of april 8% of the people that is 8 upon 100 8% i can write is uh, write it like this right 8% of the people total number of people that come come during the month of april and the total number of people that come during the season is 90000 and 8% come during april and during the month of may 12% people come so 12% 12 upon 100 of the total number of people come during the month of may okay now uh, what do i have further let me just put this in the brackets okay now it is told to me that in the month of april when i come to the table some people come from uh, country x some people come from country y and the division is what during the month of april it is 7 is to 5 right so if there are total 12 people coming seven people are from country x and five people are from country y right so now coming back to my original calculation that i was doing so if in april this is the total number of people visiting pehelgam what is the number of people coming from country y it is 5 by 12 so i'll multiply it by 5 by 12 right and what happens during the month of may during the month of may again come to the table the division is what the division is 7 is to 8 right which means that 7 plus 8 is 15 out of every 15 people 8 people come from country y this is what my table tells me okay and now coming to the original calculation that i was doing i have this is the total number of people visiting pehelgam during the month of may and what is the number of people coming from country y specifically it is 8 upon 15 of these people right can i solve this data i can solve this because the calculation is pretty easy now this 100 100 gets cancelled 90,000 gets cancelled what am i left with i am left with 8 into 5 upon 12 divided by 12 into 8 upon 15 this 8 8 further gets cancelled and what am i left with 5 upon 12 into 15 upon 12 can i further simplify it yes i can 3 5s are 15 3 4s are 12 so what i have here i have 5 5s are 25 and divided by 12 4s are 48 so this is the percentage this is the sorry ratio of the people visiting during the month of april and may from country y so you see pretty easy to solve nothing difficult as such here if you find anything confusing or if you find it difficult i would highly recommend that you pause the video here itself and make sure that you have understood the things clearly okay so now moving to the second part of this question if 55 percent of the tourists from city x in may were adults how many were children again a very very easy question nothing difficult about it don't worry okay so first of all what i'm interested in seeing how many tourists visited the city actually in the month of may and my pie chart helps me do that it tells me that 12 percent of the total tourists that visited were from were in the month of may so and total was 90,000 tourists visited and 12 percent is 12 upon 100 right so this is what i have in the month of may i'll not solve it at the moment i'll just 
keep the figures as it is because I am going to further solve them. Okay. Now, if this was the total, then there was a distribution. Some came from uh, country X, some came from country Y. And what was the distribution? My table helped me find that out. In the month of May, the distribution was 7 is to 8. It means that if there were a total of 15x tourists, 7x came from the country X. Right? 15x, how do I get it? 7x plus 8x is 15x. And that is the total number of tourists that came during the month of May. Out of them, 7x came from country X. So now 7x, 7 upon 15 of the total tourists that came in the month of May were from the uh, were from the country X, right? And it is given to me in the question that 55% of them were adults. So how many were children? It means 45% of them were children, right? So this is the total number of tourists that came from city X in the month of May and 45% of them were children. So I'll multiply this by 45%. That is 45 upon 100. Okay. Now you can see why did I not solve the question there itself? Because I wanted to cancel these zeros out here. Okay. 45 upon 100, 0, 0 gets cancelled. 45 divided by 15 is 3. So I ultimately get what? I get 7 into 12 into 9 into 3. Right. This gives me 12 nines 108, 7 threes are 21. This is what I get. And when I multiply these, what do I get? I get 2, 2, 6, 8. And these were the number of children that visited Pehelgaon from city, from country X during the month of Y. And this is my answer to this question. I hope all of you have understood. If there is a problem anywhere, I would highly recommend that you again pause the video, take a good look at this slide and try to clear the doubts here itself. Okay, so now the third part of the question says, if the average expenditure by a tourist from country X was rupees 10,000 during the season, what was the total expenditure by tourists from country X in the month of February? Again, a very, very easy question and I'm sure most of you will be able to solve it without my help. So what I recommend here is pause the video here, Solve the question for yourself and if you need help, you can always play the video again. Okay. So, how do we solve this question? All that I need to know is how many people visited Pehelgam in the month of February from country X. So, first of all, in the month of February, how many people visited in all? So, there were 22% of people. My pie chart tells me that. So, 22 upon 100 of what total number of people that visited Pehelgam during the season. Right. So this gets cancelled and what do I have? I have 22 into 900 here. Okay. This is the total number of people who visited Pehelgam during the month of February. Now there was a division. Some people came from country X, some came from country Y and the ratio was what? During the month of February, my table tells me that during the month of February, the ratio was 4 is to 5, which means if 4X people out of every 9X, came from the country X, right? So 4 upon 9 people came from country X, right? 9, how do we get 9? 4 plus 5 is 9, right? This is nothing, just the application of ratios, okay? So now it means how many people came from country X in total in the month of February? It means there were 4 by 9 of the total number of people, 22 into 900, right? This is the total number of people that visited Pehelgaon in the month of February from country X. And how much did they spend on an average? They spent 10,000 rupees. Okay, so uh, these many people will spend how much? Multiply by 10,000. Right? What do I do now? I just have to, first of all, cancel this. What do I have? 88 into 100 into 10,000. What does this give me? This gives me 88, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Right. So, what do I have here? I have 8 crores, 80 lakh rupees. So, looking at the figures, looking at the volumes, 
tourism definitely looks very lucrative to me so now you have to decide how many of you want to get into the field of tourism how and how many of you want to take up a career in tourism because the volumes definitely look interesting i don't know about the profits at the moment but volumes definitely look interesting okay so well jokes apart the question definitely is solved here and it is pretty pretty easy nothing difficult and i hope all of you have understood it okay now coming to the third variety of questions that you'll find in this chapter on pie charts and in this variety of questions as you see in this pie chart the data is given to you in the form of degrees and you are asked some questions based on this okay and let us see how to solve these questions and how to go about them the question given to you is sales of a distribution company dealing in sports goods are as follows okay so this is the sales data that's basically that is given to you in the form of pie chart and the question asked this which of the following goods contribute to half of the business now you may worry that there is no sales figure there is no nothing they have talked about money how am i going to find out which of these goods contribute to half of the business so now see it is pretty simple you are given that this is the sales total sales of a company and the complete angle is 360 degree that it can be because this is a circle okay so now for uh, this 360 degree means complete sales that is total sales right which means we have to find a combination that works out to half of this is 360 degree of half of uh, 360 degree is what it is 180 degree so we have to find out that combination of goods whose angles form a uh, total of 180 degrees together okay let's see how to do that the first option is indoor games and cricket bat so indoor games is how much it is given to you 72 degrees and cricket bat this is given to you 18 degrees this i am writing only from the pie chart that is given to me i am not doing from anything from my side right so this gives me how much this gives me 90 degrees so this cannot be my option this is just 1/4 of the sales right cricket uniform plus bat plus others let's check cricket uniform is how much 72 degrees cricket bats is how much 18 degrees and others is 90 degree we know that 72 plus 18 plus 90 this is equal to 180 degree so basically this is the figure that we were looking for and option b is my correct option here okay because cricket uniform plus cricket bat plus others they form an angle of 180 degree in the total sales and my total sales can be how much it can be 360 degree so half of that will be 180 degrees pretty easy you don't have to make any calculations this is pretty simple addition sum and you can go about this question like this okay now the second question here says if the sales from cricket uniforms are 950000 rupees what is the ratio between the sales from cricket bat and badminton now see there are two ways to solve this question the first way is i'm given that cricket uh, uniforms which forms 72 degrees of angle in the total sales give me what 9 lakh 50000 so can i find the total sales from here yes i can because the value of 1 degree i can find value of 1 degree will be what 9 lakh 50000 divided by 72 and my total sales will be what 360 degree so i can multiply it by 360 and this will give me the total sales based on which i can find the value for the ratio of cricket bat and badminton right but this is the right way to solve the question but is it a smart way to solve the question the question mark is is it a smart way to solve the question or not and definitely i would say this is not the smart way to solve the question what is the smart way so what i'll do is i see in this pie chart that cricket bat and badminton they form a degree of how much cricket bat is 18 degrees and badminton is what it is 66 degrees and it is 18 degrees of some total sales let us say s and it the badminton sales is 66 degree of total sales say s right anyway this is going to get cancelled whatever value it may be this is anyway going to get cancelled so i am only only and only interested in this 18 upon 66 right this is going to give me my answer so now can i divide this by 6 yes 6 3s are 18 6 11s are 66 so basically my answer is hidden in the 
question itself in the pie chart itself i don't need to do any calculations i can arrive at this answer within 20 seconds right if i know how to deal with this data right so the answer for this question is what it is nothing but 3 is to 11 okay now coming to the third question here what percent of sales come from the sales of badminton right so again there is nothing talk to me about the money part here there is no value of in the in terms of rupees how do i find it so see the badminton contributes to how much 66% of the uh, 66 degrees of the sales here okay and it is asked to me how much does it contribute in terms of the percentage to the business okay so now do you want me to really make some calculations here or is there a smarter way out i'll go with the smarter way out okay so now if i see 360 degree is what it is 100% it means to me right so which means that 10% is what 10% is 1 by 10 of it that is 36 degrees and 20% is what 20% would be what 72 degrees right but what am i expected to deal with i am expected to deal with 66 degrees in case of badminton which means that 66 degree has to be less than 20% right so the option has to be less than 20% okay now let us go to the options that are given to me the first option is 20% this cannot be the right answer because i'm looking for something which is less than 20% right the next option is 18.3% the next one is 20.5% again this is not possible the next one is 21.2% not possible again so actually you see rather than going through the lengthy calculation i can just take the smart way and i can go to the options here and i see there is only and only one option which has which is less than 20% here and it is 18.3% here did i do any calculations no i did not do any lengthy calculations i just used the smarter way to deal with these questions now see i'm not denying that calculations uh, are not important calculations are definitely definitely important but i know that most of you will be able to deal with the calculations right you will be able to do those calculations and even quick calculations also you can do with practice but what you need is this smarter way to think about the options given to you smarter way to think about the data given to you and that is what exactly i'm trying to give to you through the video okay let's see the next question now okay now coming to the final question of this video if the sales from cricket uniforms are 9 lakh 50000 rupees what is the average sales of footballs and cricket balls put together now see this question is again an important question because the questions on averages are quite common in the examinations okay uh, not difficult to solve but you have to just see how to apply the concept of averages here okay let us see how to do that what is given to me in the question it is given to me that the cricket uniforms that form an angle of 72 degree in my pie chart give me how much of sales they give me 9 lakh 50000 rupees of sales here right now i have to find out the sales for football and cricket balls put together so let us see how much angle they form they form an angle of footballs is 27 degrees and cricket balls is how much it is 15 degrees this is what this is a total of 42 degrees right how much sales will this translate into let us see for 1 degree what is the value 9 lakh 50000 divided by 72 and i want to find out the value for 42 degrees so i'll multiply it by 42 right can this uh, be divided further yes i can simplify it 36 21 3 7 3 8 8 right this is what i get from here so what is this this is 9 lakh 50000 multiplied by 7 and divided by 12 this is my sales for football and cricket balls together but what am i expected to find i'm expected to find the average sales i'm not expected to find the sales i'm expected to find the average sales and when i want to find the average sales there are two items that i have got i've got cricket balls and i've got footballs so i have to divide this sales by 2 right which means i can multiply this denominator by 2 i'm dividing by 2 which means in denominator there is one more 2 which is multiplied right if there were three items and i wanted to take the average rather than multiplying by 2 i would have multiplied by 
3. So, this gives me what? This gives me averages. Right? Can I simplify this? Yes, I can do that. This works out to 2,475,000. Four right? Can I simplify this further? Let's try to do that. 475 multiplied by 7 into 1000. This I am doing just to make the calculations faster. So, when I multiply 475 by 7, what do I get? I get 3325 into 1000 by 12. And when I try to divide this 3325 by 12, 12 twos are 24, right? 2 sevens are 24 and this is 7 again. And there are some more numbers ahead in the decimal form, right? And I have to multiply this whole thing by 1000, right? So my answer would be something like 277 decimal some numbers here multiplied by 1000 but I am not making any decimal calculations here. Why am I doing that? Just look at the options and you will realize why I did that. My first option is 2,50,000 but my answer has to do something with 277 multi, some numbers after the decimal some digits after the decimal and multiplied by 1000. So there is no sign of 277 here. I will not go ahead with this option. Let me see the third option. C, 300,000, this is totally out of question. D, again, I, there is no sign of 277. No option, okay? But if I look at my option B, I see 277083. So it means had I made the calculations in the decimal, uh, ahead in the decimals also, I would have gotten something like maybe 277.083 something. And I would have had to multiply it by 1000, which would have given me 277.083. So, this is my correct option. Now, see, there's no, there are no harms with making the calculations with the decimals, but they will be time consuming. And your constraint here in the exams is what? It is the time that is your constraint. Okay. So, I'm just trying to see if I can use the smartness in some way by looking at the options and try to minimize my calculations. Okay. And to minimize my calculations, I just try to avoid the calculations in decimals, right? Because my options also were quite supportive. Had my options been not supportive, maybe I would have had to make the calculations ahead also, okay? So pretty easy chapter, nothing difficult here. All that you have to do is not get scared, apply your calculations properly, apply what you know in mathematics, be uh, quite good with percentages, be quite good with ratios. And then just use your smartness and common sense. Time is the constraint here. Try to make the best use of the time here. Okay. So guys, with this, we come to the end of this video on pie charts. But as all of you know, the chapter on data interpretation is incomplete unless we have talked about things like bar graphs, line graphs, tabular data, and all those things. Very soon, I'll be back to you with the videos on those topics as well. If you don't want to miss up on those videos, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And if you have found today's video useful, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I'll be back to you very soon with more videos on quantitative aptitude. Till then, bye-bye and take care.